Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, this is the University of Sydney, and today we will hear from Dr. David Boland, who is our course director for um, electrical engineering. Um, David? Thank you. So yeah, um, so welcome to this this uh, brief talk about um, engineering. Um, so yeah, I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Engineering um, and a researcher in computer engineering. So I thought, okay, let me put myself in your shoes uh, uh, and say, you know, back when I was in high school or a secondary school, what made me come become an engineer? Um, and so kind of your, your classic things that people say is, okay, why should you become an engineer? Okay, you're really good at maths. You're really good at science, probably particularly physics, chemistry, et cetera. Um, and, you know, you have an inherent curiosity. You want to know why, why things work. You want to make things, build things, put things together. And you, you like solving problems. Okay. Um, so there's a kind of characteristic that someone might say, okay, well, maybe you should look into engineering. Um, now, that's all true, but, you know, let's be honest, that's only part of the reason why, how I became an engineer. So let's be a bit more realistic. Why did I become an engineer? Because my dad was an engineer. <laughs> and he said, you should become an engineer. And I was like, okay. Um, so that's one thing, but then, you know, let's be fair. My dad did some cool stuff. So um, he worked for a company which is called BNR, which originally made like, you know, early telephones. Um, and then he moved to Nortel, which created kind of the first switches, which allowed the telephones to communicate instead of through uh, people through these automatic switch boxes, which makes things a lot uh, more special. And he worked there until shortly before, um, you know, the dot-com boom where everything went uh, haywire. Um, but fortunately, he jumped ship and he went to an even more interesting company, arguably, which was Flag Telecom. So again, in, in uh, related to communications, how, how do people speak to each other? Um, but what he did here was he, he lay cables around the world. And so he was actually in charge of um, getting the World Cup to audiences around the world. Uh, so all of the uh, TV feed from this World Cup was sent through the world through the cables that were um, my father was in charge of laying, which is kind of interesting. So that's that's a, an interesting like idea to see, oh, engineers actually do real interesting, cool stuff. And, you know, that's all true, but that's all um, only part of the reason. The real reason uh, why I became an engineer, which I'm sure will also apply to some of you, is mom told me to. And you can always have to do whatever your mom tells you to. I'm sure you're aware. OK, so let's talk a bit about me. So I studied uh, a master's of master of engineering at Imperial College London, so in England, um, which is happens to be one of the best universities in the world. And yeah, I tried to go to Cambridge, but I wasn't quite good enough. Um, but I did well ever since then. So don't put any failures behind you. Um, you can always do well later on. Um, now, I studied a course called Information Systems Engineering at the time, uh, which basically translates to electrical and electronic engineering crossed with computer science. Um, and later on, I've gone on to become a computer engineer. So that's, that's kind of a bit of background at me. Now, what can you do during an engineering? Like, well, can you do something interesting during your degree. And one interesting thing I did was I worked at really interesting companies. Um, so as an undergraduate student, I, I had three summers as an undergrad and I worked at three different companies. Uh, so one was uh, 3G UK, uh, which was actually the first company that tried to do uh, video calling. Uh, so they created their, their own phones and they created a network that would allow people to uh, transmit video uh, feed. So, or at least the first company in England to do that. Um, next, I worked at ARM Computers, um, ARM Holdings. So they create ARM chips, which you may or may not be aware of, but they're your processor chips that are basically everywhere. So something like your iPhone will contain three ARM chips in it. 
Um, and where a lot of people might know the company Intel, uh, which create your processors for your CPU, your, your general laptop, et cetera, like ARM are for more embedded uh, computations. Um, so your mobile phones, your tablets, et cetera. Uh, and they've worked with companies like Apple and they're everywhere. And the last company I worked for was Citigroup. So you can see that, you know, you can go straight into kind of a more engineering focused field, but also engineering opens different doors. So, um, so I worked for an investment bank, um, which was very interesting. Um, and, you know, for an undergraduate, you know, everyone's working in uh, a bar or something to, to get some extra money during semester. I tell you what, these three companies paid way more in a 12 week internship or placement than you would make over a year doing a part-time job. So you can do well, uh, especially the investment banking guys, if you ever choose to go that route. Um, and investment banks, it turns out they love engineers more so than people who study finance uh, because engineering's hard and they know people, they want people who are capable of working hard and good at maths. I also got job offers on graduation uh, from two of these companies. Um, so, uh, you know, you get opportunities coming for you from all sorts of places. Um, I personally, I chose to decline it and study a PhD. Um, now, was it the right choice? Uh, let me put it this way. 10 years after my degree, I got the same salary as the starting salary leaving university I, would have, I was offered at Citigroup. Um, and if I worked at Citigroup for those 10 years, I would be a multimillionaire by now. Um, so maybe not the most best financial decision, but it was uh, gave me some freedom to study something I was interested in. And it also produced more job opportunities. So uh, over the course of my postgraduate research and afterwards, I've been offered jobs at something like Imagination, another computer chip company, and Microsoft Research. Um, I'm sure you can guess what they do. So there's all sorts of opportunities. Um, now, why on earth did I end up at the University of Sydney? Um, well, from London, what happened? I, I made a mistake. Uh, I got married. Um, and my wife was Australian. She dragged me to um, Australia. So I packed up my stuff and initially went to Monash University and then transitioned over to the University of Sydney, where hopefully you guys can all spend some time in the future. So I wanted to ask, I, I try something. I don't know if this will work or not, um, but if you have access to advice, can you go to menti.com and enter this passcode and we'll see if you can tell me what you think an engineer does. Um, so I'll just give it a moment, see if anyone can type something in on this, this screen. And even just somebody just type hi to show me if you can get in. Hi, someone said hi, cool, people can get in. So now answer the real question. What do you think an engineer actually does? Very cool things and solves problems. I've just told you those two. What type of things? Engineerish things. Office job things, solutions. Speaking to clients. Designs the future. Give it a couple more minutes, see how people go with their ideas. A couple more seconds. Any last minute ideas?
Okay. Um, so I, I think that's actually, uh, I'm actually quite happy with that set of responses I've got from you guys. Um, uh, certainly if I asked the same question in England, they would say they fix your dishwasher um, or something. Um, but yeah, this is exactly what we, or it's closer to what we do. Um, we work with people. Um, so there's this idea that an engineer is super introverted and likes to stay in his box, um, in his little cubicle and work on his own all day, uh, doing God knows what. Um, but that's not true. Yeah, we do speak to clients, understand their problem and try and work to a solution for their problem. We obviously work on solving problems. We create new things. Uh, we, we have to be highly innovative. Um, and yeah, we, we work to create what is the future of life, right? I mean, engineers created all of your uh, smartphones, iPads, communications, um, cars, like pretty much everything you have fun with uh, that isn't old school sports uh, was, you could argue, is created by an engineer at some point. Um, so yeah, I would say, frankly, they are professional sol problem solver. And what you need as an engineer is you need creativity. Uh, you need some knowledge, uh, a lot of knowledge, and that knowledge will be your maths and physics background. And what we do is we try and reuse whatever you can. Like we don't build everything from scratch. We say, okay, this guy has created this cool technology which allows, if I press a finger on a screen, it senses that I press the, sink, the, the, the screen at this location. And then someone else goes, okay, that's really cool. And I'm gonna turn that into a video game. Uh, you know, like you build on each other's uh, shoulders. Um, and we you know, invent stuff when you need to, uh, and you'll have to, but you know, the, you, you need to understand your knowledge and build this background so you can build off the shoulders of giants. Um, and then the next question is, okay, okay, so we kind of have an idea, an engineer is a professional problem solver. What about all the different types of engineering? Okay, there's electrical, electronic, computer, software, mechatronic, aeronautical, mechanical, fluid, chemical, water, civil, probably others. How on earth do I pick which one I want to solve? Um, and actually, what do even these things mean? Um, and let's just make it even uh, harder within electrical and electronic or computer software. That's kind of our area. We focus on sub problems within them. So these are just areas where we focus on problems and we, we try and break it down into areas where we can be an expert on. Um, and then we focus on solving them. So let's talk about electrical uh, engineering and computer engineering, which is um, what you're hopefully in this talk for. So what is electrical engineering? Quite simply, it's everything to do with electricity. So what is electricity? We take a sun and how do we go from a sun to something like PUGB mobile, right? What are the steps involved? Seems crazy that we can actually do this if you think that's what we're doing, but Essentially, that is what an electrical engineers have managed to achieve. So first step, we need to harness power, okay? So you have the power engineer who will work on, okay, I need to convert a sun's energy through a solar panel or wind energy into some kind of electricity. But then I also need to transfer that electricity uh, across Australia to individual users, to individual devices and store that power. So there's all sorts of questions there. Of how do you do it? Then you need the electronics engineer, which actually giving you the platform that you can do your, um, uh, your game on, okay? And that electronics engineer is also gonna have to break it up into sub areas. So this is gonna be the person who designs the touch screen, the de person who de designs the, um, the various sensors on board, the, the chips that are going to con connect to the um, the phone signals, the battery, and how you're going to draw power, and of course the computer chip itself. And kind of like I alluded to before, a computer chip you need a computer engineer, but you're going to have multiple chips on this computer, right? You have might have an arm, you might have more than one arm, you might have an Intel chip on on an iPad, you might have lots of small integrated circuits, which just do very simple computations. And we have to design all of these as well. 
Um, and then we also have to design the back end. So remember, a, a game is not just design, played on the mobile phone itself. What you do is you enter your, your decisions and they're sent to a server, um, which will contact, communicate with a different competitor. And it will also make its own calculations because a mobile phone, if it did everything locally on that mobile phone, it would get too hot. It would consume too much power and your battery life wouldn't last long at all. So how are we gonna to talk to that uh, from that mobile device to the server? Well, we need a telecommunications engineer and they create all of the, um, the communications between all the devices. So they could be kind of my old school uh, underwater cables, like, like things my dad wrote, or they can be uh, worked on, or they can be more modern things like 3G, 4G, 5G, 6G communications, which allow us to communicate over the air. Um, and then finally, we need the person who actually designs the computer program itself. So we need software engineers. Um, so that's kind of a breakdown of what we do in our building. Uh, and of course, everyone talks to each other. So software engineer needs to speak to the computer and the telecommunications engineer. The computer engineer needs to speak to the electronics engineer and the power engineer. Um, everyone needs to work together. So what do I do? I'm a teacher and a, also a researcher in computer engineering. So in terms of teaching, what do I personally teach? I teach how do computers work? And actually I teach how all, pseudo, all digital circuits work. So everything that you can see on this, um, this uh, iPhone, these individual components, this is what I try and design. And then I talk about how to use them well. Um, and you have to understand what's going on under the hood to do things well. And I try and do it in a fun way. So I might make students design software games and translate this into a robot. And actually, this is a, an example of a project that was just run this year. Um, so he's created this robot and it's got to navigate through this maze and it uses various sensors to navigate. Um, unfortunately, it's frozen. But it can, you know, this is actually some student software which is designed to sense walls and move around a maze automatically. Um, and this is just what a student will learn from a first year having entered the course without having done any coding at all uh, or any work with electronics. Um, so that's what you kind of learn at the university. Um, then as you get to your uh, third and fourth year, you start actually designing computer chips with me. So people actually design their own processor, which is kind of cool in my course. Um, and other, other staff throughout the university will do similar things, hopefully make teaching exciting. In terms of research, I'm working in how do I make computer chips smaller, faster, cheap, cheaper. And I'm particularly working in the field of machine learning. So how can I get a drone to fly in a field and automatically detect a bushfire and help evacuate people in, a, in an automated fashion. Um, and so these are examples of machine learning. How can I track objects or find a dog, identify objects? There's all sorts of uses for them. Where do our students go? They go all around into various industries. Um, for, so we got power industry are obviously large in Australia. Uh, we got the big companies like Ausgrid, uh, Energy Australia. Um, telecommunications injury, industry is also big. So uh, companies like Telstra and Optus. Um, so those are kind of like your most obvious electrical engineering large companies, um, but there's all sorts of other options. Okay, so this, there's consulting engineering. So Accenture, Deloitte, there is the growing software engineering, um, things like Google, Facebook, Waymo, Microsoft, IBM, but they also do hardware, right? They also create their own, um, Google create their own phones. Um, uh, Facebook work with Apple and they design hardware under the hood. Um, Waymo creates driverless cars. They actually create the physical devices. Uh, so we've sent students in all of these places. So these are opportunities that you could get from an electrical engineering degree. You could work in defense, um, so, and it doesn't need to be actually designing missiles. It can, you know, be talking about how can, how can we protect Australia and protect Australia in a cyber world? How do we protect people from 
uh, online bank fraud. Um, then there's small startups like Cochlear creating uh, implants or ways of uh, understanding sound for people with uh, problems. Uh, similarly, we've got Aria, which uh, is creating people artificial sight, um, so sight through sound. So we've got startups in that area. And I mentioned finance and banking is a, also an opportunity for engineers. And of course, you can create your own startups. And we've had various successes from the university in this area. Um, statistics, uh, our graduates generally get employed well. Uh, they get pretty good sal starting salaries, higher than average uh, over other um, uh, non-engineering opportunities. Um, and most of our students find industry placements during their studies. So you can have your own opportunities, it's exciting. Uh, looking to the future, we're building new EI te teaching labs. So if you come join the School of Sydney, you'll have brand new labs very soon certainly over the course of your degree, which would be pretty exciting. And look, there's tons of problems to solve into the future. You know, how do we create drones? How do we get self-driving cars? How do we create a green society that can work solely up, only off uh, solar energy or wind energy? How do we create grids and use cars as batteries? How can we share cars? Um, how can we get use robots to make our lives easier? I mean, I've got my robot vacuum cleaner and that's about it. Uh, what else can we take in the future? How can we make a faster, more reliable internet? How can we have immersive gaming? There's so many problems and we need new students to, to help us solve these problems. So I hope that gives you an idea um, about what we do. And of course, the biggest problem to solve is how to get my children to stay quiet. And if any of you, are able to do that, then of course you need to become an engineer and you'd be a multi-billionaire if you can solve that problem. All right, so I'll end there and I'm happy to answer any questions. So I think questions should be in the Q&A if you have them. Yes, thank you, David, uh, for that um, fantastic presentation. I hope our students enjoy it as much as we did. Uh, please, any questions, put them on the Q&A and we'll be very happy to, um, uh, to answer them. David, in terms of electrical engineering, um, for students that are considering it, is there any field that you, or any area within electrical, any of their specializations that you think it's, I don't know, more popular or students tend to choose a bit more or I don't know, anything that you can tell them about that? Any any field that is more popular? Yes. Um, so in the, the problem is your field always changes. <laughs> um, so, you know, years ago, power was the one to, to be interested in. Uh, all the power countries, particularly in Australia, are hiring, hiring big. Um, in after that, it became the telecommunications industry uh, with 4G, 5G, uh, really having this huge potential and obviously Telstra being a massive company. Right now, um, you'd argue it is computer and software engineering, which are the big ones. Um, computer trying to define, design embedded systems. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going into this world where we all want handheld digital devices. Um, so uh, having more efficient ways and things that can use batteries longer are really good. And similarly, people are super interested in machine learning. So that's where software engineers slash computer engineers are very useful. How can we use uh, machine learning to automatically solve problems for us? Uh, so right now, you'll make the most money by being a machine learning data scientist and studying uh, computer engineering, software engineering, or computer science. So in terms of the, sorry? No, 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 I was, no, no, just, just to complement the question. So basically um, this could be something that is very popular today, but by the time my students graduate and you know, they, on the second job, it might change, right? But still electrical and engineering is a career that you can say that it- Yeah, it, yeah, you're pretty you, safe that electrical engineering 
in the, the world is going to be digital. So you need it to know an electrical engineering background is going to set you up in a digital world. This is, I, I don't see that changing in the next 20 years. Um, so I, I think there's, it's an excellent opportunity, but I'm just saying that there will be waves of things become of interest and then they'll go away and then they'll come back. Um, so useful in the quantum industry, we actually have uh, a relationship with Cindy, Sydney Nano, um, which uh, the, so we, we teach courses in that area. Um, and so they're designing uh, hardware that's related to it. Um, and we also work closely with physics in that area. Um, so we've got uh, two leading professors in that area, uh, uh, Professor Shaki E, uh, Dr. Liwele and Robert Minasian. So we're actually one of the leaders there and the Sydney Nano building, we have a special building that works, works on that. Now, and me personally, I'm actually trying to work with uh, Sydney Nano from a computer engineering side. How can I design the hardware to support their, their what they're building? So even from a not, immediately related area like computer engineering, you'd still work with quantum computing potentially in the future. Um, entry requirements, you said maybe Carlos, you could answer that. Um, hi David, well, um, at the moment, if your ATAR is 90, that's the ATAR for the Bachelor of Engineering Honors, and then you can choose electrical, that, that will be your, your entry requirement and math, no? Math is a prerequisite now for all engineering and, and other degrees within the university. Uh, but other than that, that <laughs> I suppose that basically that will be your, your main requirement if we're talking about domestic students. If uh, the student who asked the question was by any chance international, they will be depending on the uh, qualifications that you can choose from your country. Could be the IB, could be SAT, ACT, Etc. But it will be still the equivalent of uh, at least a 98. Yeah. And, you know, the thing to add to that is be strong at maths. I mean, you don't need to be super strong, but at least one of your stronger subjects should be maths and an interest should really be physics. Um, will be help you if you're going to study electrical engineering. Um, in terms of the best engineering degree considering future growth, I think that kind of goes to my kind of previous response, not sure. Uh, but if I was to go for one right now, I would say go for computer science right now, but kind of almost a bit safer is to go software engineering or computer engineering, so electrical engineering. Um, you'll learn the ability to do something like software in that um, in this course, we, and if you want, you can tailor your course more towards a software engineering background, um, but it gives you that broader spectrum uh, of electrical. But of course, I'm biased and someone from computer science might try and sell you the other way. Um, but yeah, I would certainly say it would give you a greater freedom and potentially um, more opportunity. Having said all of that, I, I pretty much always encourage students, just follow what you're interested in. You think computers are cool, study computer engineering. You think uh, you, you want to understand how the world talks to each other, study telecommunications. If you want to build a car, study mechanical. Like, fo follow your interests because that's what will make you do well in a degree. Um, and you'll find a job afterwards if you do well in your degree. Um, thank you, David. And it's 4.31 now, so that's the end of our session. Thank you everyone who came here today. Thank you to Dr. David Boland for that great presentation and, and, and answering the questions. David, any last um, words of advice or, or any comments you would like for students who are considering electrical engineering? Um, electrical engineering, the digital, digital electronics is the future. Come to do electrical engineering. And if you wanna have fun, come do it at Sydney.